What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2021 Genesis G80 courtesy of Jack Giobalvo Genesis in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So this is actually the beginning of the third generation of the G80 now. It's been around for that long now. It shares a platform with the GV80 that I actually just got done driving. So as far as competition goes, G80 is going to be competing with the Mercedes-Benz E-Class which that car starts at 55.3 BMW 5 Series as well that car starts at 54.2 and the G80 starts at thousands less and I'll get into the pricing here in a second but G80 also of course comes with America's best warranty being 5 years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100,000 miles on the powertrain also 3 years complimentary maintenance so you don't have to pay for oil changes tire rotations things like that for the first 3 years of ownership also you get the Genesis 6 experience which essentially means you never have to step foot in a dealership if you didn't want to if you ever needed to get that oil changed or your tires rotated they will actually come out to you drop you off a loaner and then return your vehicle when they are done with it so that's definitely a convenient thing especially in times like we're living in right now and so in this video i will be going over everything about the new g80 i'll be testing out acceleration braking steering feel be going over interior exterior tech exhaust clip the list goes on so Having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2021 G80. First one being the 2.5T, starting at $47,700. 2.5T Advanced for $52,300. 2.5T Prestige, which is the one we have today, starting at $56,600. 3.5T for $59,100. And the 3.5T Prestige, starting at $65,000. $5,100. And by the way, that was all rear wheel drive configurations. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of them, simply add $3,150 to any of those prices. But so then, as you could probably tell by the trim levels there, there are two different engine configurations for the Genesis G80. First one being the 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. This one puts out 300 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 311 pound feet of torque available for the power band of right around 1,600 to 4,000 RPM. Power again sent to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which we will test out in a little bit here. Zero to 60 time for this engine configuration comes in at approximately 5.9 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 23 city, 32 on the highway for the rear wheel drive, 22 in the city and 30 on the highway then for the all wheel drive, either way taking premium unleaded fuel. But so then there is the more powerful engine configuration for this one being a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. That one puts out 375 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 391 pound-feet of torque, available from the power band of 1,300 to 4,500 RPM. Again, sent to rear wheels or all wheels through that same eight-speed automatic with paddle shifter, zero to 60 time for that one, five seconds flat. MPG numbers for that one come in at 19 in the city, 27 highway for the rear wheel drive, 18 city, 26 on the highway for the all wheel drive. Again, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we test out anything like the paddle shifters or the acceleration here, I did want to mention there is a drive mode button located just behind the cup holders that will give you choices between comfort, smart, eco, sport, and custom, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and the suspension settings as well. And so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. And I want to test out the paddle shifters here first. And let's see how quickly they're going to react for us here. All right, here we go. Not bad. Eh, little bit, ever so slight bit of a delay. So not the quickest I've ever tested, but then again, actually kind of surprised me. This is a pretty darn quick reacting paddle shifters. Don't always expect that from Genesis and Hyundai because in the past they've never had that, but that wasn't that bad. I will say that not as quick as Mercedes and BMW, but not that bad. And but so now having got that out of the way, what do you say? Let's give back full control to the G80. And yet again, let's find another straightaway and let's see how quickly the G80 is going to get us here up to speed. Da, 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 green light. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> there it is, baby. Oh my gosh. Well, certainly no issues emerging onto the highway. 
sometimes when you have the less powerful engine configuration, you think it's not gonna be that great, but dang, that thing was great. That was more than enough power, quite honestly. Definitely more than enough for merging onto the highway. Honestly, you can get that upgraded engine. That That's gonna be, I guess, a little more fun to hit the gas, but quite honestly, that was pretty darn fun. That's a pretty quick engine for this particular car, I will say that. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front disc in the back 12.8 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's actually going to differ dependent upon the engine configuration that you go with. For the 2.5 liter that we have today, it's actually a bit better coming in at 116 feet, which is plenty respectable. Then with the 3.5 liter, it comes in at 120 24 feet i can i guess attribute that to the fact that the 2.5 liter is going to be a little lighter than the 3.5 liter so maybe that's why it stops a little bit quicker but nonetheless both are respectable stopping distance the 116 is really really good though i will say that but overall when it comes to that braking feel it's perfectly fine i've had no issues with bringing this thing to a stop it's not a soft braking feel or anything like that it feels good in the g80 then touching on suspension and handling in the g80 up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension did want to also mention for the 3.5 liter you're also going to get an electronically controlled adaptive suspension which essentially is where the car's camera system scans the road adjusting the dampers to any road imperfections giving you a little bit more of a smoother ride there but overall even though we don't have that because we have the 2.5 liter i feel like the g80 has always been above average when it comes to ride quality and that's certainly the case even without that adaptive suspension it's so up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely so absolutely no issues whatsoever with the ride quality when it comes to this 2.5 liter trim that we have today as far as steering feel goes it's actually really really nice I will say you can tell the difference between the driving modes I have it in sport driving mode still right now and it is a noticeably heavier feel to the steering so I absolutely love that but even when I take it out of it when I first started driving this in comfort driving mode I will say at slower speeds it's definitely a heavier feel which I like and then it kind of loosens up as you get higher up in the speed but we'll say steering feel overall is plenty fine for the g80 it definitely points you in the direction that you want to go plenty fine there as far as cabin noise goes you guys could probably tell there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise or any rattling or anything like that coming into the cabin of course so that is pretty much as expected at this price point i guess you could say and that's due in part because this one does have acoustic laminated glass as well so again as expected touching on visibility i could see great absolutely wonderful out the back sometimes it's second row headrests protrude up a good bit and you can't see as good but in the g80 that is not a problem whatsoever so i can see perfectly fine out the back head-up display is also going to come with the 2.5 prestige and the 3.5 prestige trim level so therefore you'll be able to look at your speed speed limit and safety information up on that windshield as well and you can change the colors of that too actually also rain sensing windshield wipers will come standard across the board so whenever the g80 detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on this windshield wipers for you so it's just one less thing you got to worry about essentially so that's always nice but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this completely redesigned 2021 genesis g80 all right so here she is you guys the new 2021 genesis g80 the beginning of the third generation of design of the g80 it looks amazing definitely ties in very well with the rest of the genesis lineup now with that front grille and the quad beam headlights and all that but anyways let's go ahead and start let's make our way to the front of this one let's start up front victoria black by the way is the exterior color name here of the g80 in case anybody was curious up front that front new grille is designed essentially to mimic the design of the Genesis logo. Let me get a little closer here so I can show you guys what I mean. And so you guys can see the design of that Genesis logo. It is essentially just simply brought down to the front grille. It is more or less identical and that's how they got that new design of the front grille that they now use on all of their other vehicles as well. Speaking of the front grille where a lot of other manufacturers will use plastic for the finish of that front grille. Genesis actually uses metal. So this is a very high-end front grille. And I like how the adaptive cruise control system is integrated into the front of that front grille as well. You almost can't even see it. It's integrated so well. That same design kind of continues down to the bottom portion of that front bumper as well. And you guys can see towards the corners of it, there's actually air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination down there for a little bit of aerodynamics. But now let me touch on the headlights a little bit. Full quad LED headlights will come 
become standard across the board. There are no halogens whatsoever on the G80, of course. And again, similar to the remainder of the Genesis lineup, that headlight design, I should say, automatic feature does come standard as well, meaning when it starts to get dark on a night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard and automatic high beams actually do come standard then as well. But so now that wraps up the front of the G80, let's go ahead and make our way to this side of this one. And so once again, I'm climbing into the woods to get yet a better angle of the side of this one. Chrome window surrounds do come standard. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated as well. And there are actually no integrated turret signals within those side mirrors. And reason being is because the turret signals are actually kind of a continuation of the headlights and they're integrated into those two slats on the front fender actually. It's a very cool design and they're gonna show up in amber when you do have the turn signals on and that's of course what you guys are looking at right now. So it's a pretty cool look there. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, I think these are probably, at least the wheels that we have today, the coolest designed wheels that I have ever seen. 18 inch alloys coming standard with the G80, 19 inch alloys with the 2.5 advanced, 2.5 prestige and 3.5 standard and 20 inch alloys then for the 3.5 prestige. And actually for that 3.5 liter, you also get soft closed doors like BMW and Mercedes often do as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. We don't of course have it today, so I can't show it to you guys, but it's pretty cool. But again, love the wheel design on this G80. They look amazing. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. So now since we are round back, you do have Genesis lettering spelled out horizontally. Definitely a nice look to it there. Also kind of a chrome accent toward the upper portion of that trunk there as well. When it comes to those taillights, they are LED dual bar our taillights to tie in perfectly with the headlights of course. You do also have that all-wheel drive badging if the G80 that you have is equipped with all-wheel drive. And just below it all a very nice exhaust outlet design. They are dual exhaust with dual trapezoidal exhaust outlets finished in chrome. So having said that, do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the G80, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there of course are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. Easiest way is there is a hands-free smart trunk with auto open that actually does come standard for every trim level across the board. That's the way most people of course are going to go ahead and open that trunk, I'm sure. There's also a power trunk if you were to go with the prestige or advanced trim levels. There's a couple different ways to go ahead and open that. There is actually an integrated button within the trunk right above the rear view camera. It's kind of hidden, which is pretty cool. So you just press that. That's one way. Also a button on the key fob itself. That is yet another way. And there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. So like I said, a few different ways to go ahead and open it. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.1 cubic feet. There's also, of course, some cargo netting on the sides there. And if you're curious, if the G80 had to fix a flat or a spare tire underneath the cargo floor, it actually has a spare tire, which is pretty cool. I always prefer that because it's a lot easier to I don't know, maybe I'm used to it, but it's a lot easier to fix if that were to happen. So either way, you got the Genesis experience and roadside assistance, five years free roadside assistance. So do not really matter anyways, but then make your way to the rear leg room that comes in at 38.7 inches. So for reference, I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I have back there. I will say the rear seats are plenty comfortable. I did want to mention that power rear sunshade with manual side window sunshades do come standard. That's pretty cool. And by the way, for those passengers to control that power rear sunshade, there's actually a button located on that rear center armrest. So that was pretty cool to see. I always like that the rear passengers have some control back there. And by the way, that setup does come with the advanced prestige and all 3.5 liter trim levels in case you wanted to get that. But heated rear seats actually come standard on all all wheel drive trim levels also the prestige again those buttons are located on that rear center armrest with the cup holders three zone climate control coming with advanced and prestige packages and that's where the rear passengers can set their own temperatures back there rear ventilation of course coming standard therefore and you do have some front seat back map pockets back there as well and again overall seats were insanely comfortable for rear passengers so we'll say that but then make our way to the front seats leatherette surfaces actually coming with the 2.5 standard and 2.5 advanced however if you were to go with the 2.5 prestige that we have today or the 3.5 liter trims 
you are going to get full leather seating and the 3.5 prestige is going to give you napa leather seating by the way 12-way power adjustable front seats do come standard and that comes with smart posture care as genesis calls it essentially they take your height and your inseam and then create your best possible driving experience that's pretty cool heated front seats also coming standard ventilated front seats coming with the 2.5 advanced trim level and up and by the way to control the heated and ventilated front seats there is a digital climate control setup located just in front of the shifters and i'll get more into that later but that is a pretty cool setup there 16-way power driver seat coming with the prestige trim level there's also an ergo motion seat with the prestige as well which essentially uses seven air cells located within the seats to adjust the support level in connection with the driving style and also the driving mode so for example if you're going around the back roads a little bit faster those side bolsters will tighten a little bit better help holding you in place so that's just an example also memory settings for up to two different drivers are going to be found on the driver's side door as well and again the front seats are just as comfy as the rear seats definitely no issues with finding my perfect driving position between that and the steering wheel and so touching on the steering wheel a little bit it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped across the board and it will be heated if you go with an all-wheel drive configuration or a prestige trim level if you wanted that then take a look at the startup let me first start by showing you guys this pretty cool key here you do have your genesis logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch there is a remote start that comes with the prestige that is going to be that circular button that says hold at the very top you simply just hold that down it's going to start up and warm up on super cold days in pennsylvania like today also a digital key you can have with the prestige trim level as well it's essentially you just download an app on your phone you hold it up to the door it's going to lock and unlock and then you put it in a select NFC slot just in front of the shifter and cup holders here and that is how you're going to be able to turn this one on once it detects that it is located there so you technically don't ever have to take your keys out although I will say they're still more convenient because it takes a little bit longer to set up that app when you're walking outside to get in the car but anyways last thing I wanted to mention on the key at least is smart pack everybody loves smart park for Genesis it's the same deal as Hyundai you essentially push the lock button make sure the car is locked you put the remote start on that's how you're going to turn it on and then you are able to use smart park you can pull it forward or backwards if somebody parks too close to you in a parking spot and you can't get in rather than climbing through the trunk go ahead and use smart park and then you're able to get in you can pull it out so it's pretty cool it's not going to run into anything either if i were to stand in front of the g80 and keep pressing that button it's going to automatically stop or the other option is simply let go of it when you're holding it down that's how you move it you let go of the smart park button and then it's going to automatically stop for you as well. So very, very, very cool feature. I always like that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the gauges on the G80. It is an 8-inch LCD gauge cluster. The right portion is going to be digital essentially for all trim levels, but the 3.5 Prestige because the 3.5 Prestige is going to give you a 12.3-inch 3D digital gauge cluster that is so cool i remember seeing that in korea before we ever got it here in the u.s and now it's here in the u.s so it is pretty darn cool i like that digital gauge cluster but anyways it's not the one we have today of course but still you can check out a bunch of different things within that eight inch lcd screen including the outside temperature there's your average miles per gallon of course the digital portion is going to be your uh, tachometer up there as well you could check out some safety features there's a little compass when you need your next oil change of course your miles per gallon at any given time the list really goes on your driving modes i should mention as well so really a good bit you could check out up there now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality we'll find a panoramic sunroof for the 2.5 advanced trim level and up suede headliner is only going to come with a 3.5 prestige trim level dual zone climate control is going to come standard across the board but again three zone climate control or tri zone is going to come with the advanced 2.5 liter trim level and up multicolor ambient lighting i gotta love that that comes standard across the board for every single trim level you can adjust that through the settings menu on the infotainment screen that's pretty cool piano black gloss accents are going to come standard on the g80 however you will find matte wood finish accents for the 2.5 advanced trim level and up and that's of course what we have here they're on the doors they're just underneath the infotainment screen also located around the shift and cup holders and all that stuff so definitely a nice finish there 
wireless phone charger coming with the 2.5 prestige and 3.5 liter trim levels is going to be just in front of the cup holders and of course just beside that you have dual usb charging ports as well and just above that you have a digital climate control setup so this is where you can control your heated and ventilated seat buttons also your heated steering wheel button and of course the climate control itself but it is all digital you can actually touch it and it'll react just kind of like a smartphone would so i love that that setup is there and overall the attention to detail that genesis used in the g80 just like the gv80 i recently drove it's insane i absolutely love it even the texturized pedals are pretty cool to me also just around the push button start you guys can see the perimeter design of that there's also a little design in silver on the air vents as well i think that's pretty cool love the shifter itself it's a nice clear design with a texturized finish around the perimeter once again so that's pretty cool as well within the center armrest you have a decent amount of storage there's a little tray up top there and there's a 12 volt power outlet within that as well on the roof of this one there's actually an overhead sunglass holder but there's no actual indication that it is that because there's nothing that says push or anything like that so that's going to be up there if you wanted it also a frameless rear view mirror is going to come standard i love that design as well and then there's also home light controls for up to three different garage doors just underneath of that rear view mirror it's quite nice as well design to the doors is also pretty nice so overall an insanely nice finish to the g80 not to mention i forgot to mention this the headrests for the G80, they are like a pillow, just like the GV80. So it's pretty cool. If you really hit the gas and your head gets thrown back into the headrest, it's gonna be quite comfortable for you. I will say that. Anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because it really gets good here. There is a 14.5 inch color touchscreen display that comes standard for every single trim level across the board. You gotta love it. It is voice controlled, it is actual touchscreen as well, and there is a circular dial located just to the left of the cup holders. That is yet another way you can control what is on that infotainment screen. There, of course, is a nice cityscape background to start out with, but then when you start delving into it, there is a bunch of really cool features here, including voice memo if you wanted to not forget something you needed to do later that day it'll record your voice and then play it back for you at a later date there is also of course your navigation information you guys could check that out up there as well bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay as well driving statistics also some traffic information weather information up there too but perhaps my favorite part about this particular infotainment screen is the icon labeled sounds of nature and so when you press this sounds of nature button you have several different sounds that you can listen to so i'm going to let you guys listen to them here but it's just kind of a cool quirky little feature that genesis and sometimes hyundai does as well so without further ado let me let you guys listen to that and i will be right back And so in addition to those sounds of nature, you can also check out your climate control up there as well. In addition to that, you can also control your seating configurations up on that screen if you did not want to control them on the seat itself. And of course, you can check out your radio settings up there as well. And so by the way, when it comes to the sound systems of the G80, there are two of them. Standard setup is going to be a 12 speaker sound system, but if you go with any other trim, 2.5 liter advanced and up, you will get a 21 speaker Lexicon sound system. So of course that's the one we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> plenty of loudness the bass is crazy i just heard it in the gv80 so i know how it sounds like but yeah it's pretty pretty darn good bowers and wilkins always my favorite but dang it was a pretty darn good sound system i will say that but last thing i wanted to mention on that text screen at least is when you do put the G80 in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. In addition to that, 2.5 liter prestige trim level and up is going to add to that a surround view monitor, giving you a bird's eye view of everything around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention with the G80 when it comes to safety, it's not yet rated with IIHS for the G80 for the 2021 model year, but I will say the 2020 model year 
was an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. And typically the way it works is cars only get better over time. So I would imagine it would be the same thing with the 2021 model year. So front side side curtain airbags also come standard driver's knee airbag as well, rear side impact airbags to go along with that. Also in the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. It's all pretty boring stuff at this point, but in addition to that, some of the more advanced fun safety features coming with the G80 standard is going to be a forward collision avoidance assist system, lane keep assist, which by the way is an excellent system on Hyundai and Genesis products, more so than other manufacturers that I typically test. Lane following assist, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. It's gonna be the little car icons in the side mirror there. Adaptive cruise control, which is another excellent system with Genesis. Driver attention warning system, high beam assist, also highway driving assist two, which essentially is Genesis's uh, semi-autonomous level two driving. So it's pretty cool. It's for the highway basically. Also safe exit assist also coming standard. Then if you were to go with either of the prestige packages, you will also get a blind spot view monitor, remote smart park, which I already mentioned to you guys is pretty cool. Rear occupant alert, rear parking sensors, and a digital key as well. And so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, what I think about this one in the end, still the best value in its class starting at around $7,000 less than the competition. So there's something to be said about that. And really you get a lot with that, even with that base model with the three years free maintenance, the 10 year powertrain warranty. If you're questioning the reliability of those turbocharged engines, either one of them, you got a warranty for 10 years. So you really got peace of mind there, quite honestly. You never have to hang out at a dealership with Genesis either, like I said, they actually come to your house and drop you off a loaner, take your car for the oil change, tire rotation, whatever, and then give it back to you. I absolutely love that. Also, both engines of the G80 are plenty powerful. We had the less powerful one today, and I can tell you it definitely hauls. 3.5 liter is gonna be crazy, but both engines are amazing. Also, I absolutely love the original styling of the G80. It looks like nothing else on the road, essentially looks like a Genesis. So I love how Genesis being a new brand has really come to make its own image. It looks great. Also, as far as which trim level I would pick on this one, I would actually pick the 2.5 liter Advanced. So we have the Prestige today, but the 2.5 Advanced, I think is the best value and the best pick for the G80. Of course, can go more than that if you wanted to, but that particular trim adds the nice 19 inch amazing looking wheels that we have today, a panoramic sunroof, ventilated front seats, three zone climate control, the 21 speaker Lexicon sound system, ventilated front seats as well. So it really gives you a good bit for a little bit extra. So the advanced trim level for the 2.5 liter is what I personally would go with. Honestly, in the end, I love this thing. This is a heck of a car, especially at this price point. Really the only constructive criticism that I can think of is the ride quality doesn't quite match the E-Class or the 5 Series, but it's still not bad. It's certainly plenty fine ride quality. It's just not quite as good as some of the competition, but really that's the only constructive criticism I can think of. Also, actually, 3D digital gauges. I would have liked to have seen that standard across the board as well. Not that these gauges are bad. It's just digital gauge clusters, in my opinion, are absolutely amazing. And Hyundai and Genesis are kind of known for being really advanced with the tech. So I would have liked to have seen that. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new G80 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media, particularly TikTok. I've been doing a bunch of different videos on TikTok lately. So feel free to check me out there if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.